to Tim Root with your KLEK 1 to 2.5 forecast. A summertime shower or thunderstorm in the forecast for today and tonight. Most of the day partly sunny, most of the night partly cloudy. The high in the low 90s, the low in the low 70s. Another chance of a shower or thunderstorm Wednesday, partly sunny near 90. And more the same for Thursday, partly sunny around 90 with a chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Jones World, that's your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. U.S. President Donald Trump's under fire from senior Republicans over his defense of Vladimir Putin instead of American intelligence agencies at their summit in Helsinki. U.S. officials have charged a Russian woman with spying. The EU and Japan have signed one of the world's biggest trade deals. An official Brexit campaign group Vote Leave's been fined and referred to the police in the UK after being found to have broken electoral laws. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro in northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. K-L-E-K L-P Jonesboro the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone. Tuesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest today is Dr. Tamara Pace Oliver. Good morning. Good morning. She Good is the, morning. She is the current Mrs. Arkansas United States and she recently competed in um, competition uh, pageant I'm sorry uh, Mrs. Uh, Arkansas United well the Mrs. United States That's correct. pageant and so she's going to talk about her experience and other things she plans to do as she finishes her reign as Mrs. Arkansas and uh, one thing I want to point out um, there is a clear distinction between the Miss and Mrs. So for those who may not know can you please explain Absolutely. So thank you so much again for having me on this morning. As she stated earlier, I am Dr. Tamara Pace Glover, and I am the reigning Mrs. Arkansas United States. And I'm just so thankful to have this opportunity to not only just represent our state, our community, but just to be um, a role model for individuals in our community, especially married women in our community. Because oftentimes we think that, you know, once you get married, then that's kind of it. You just solely focus on, you know, your family and raising your kids but we can do all that and then some we are multitaskers as women and we wear so many different hats and so to the clear distinction is that a lot of people know about the miss and that's m-i-s-s but marriage division is the m-r-s is of course you have to naturally be a married woman and so with the beauty about the mrs united states national pageant system is that we have eight different divisions oh, wow. so we go all the way to little miss all the way to the marriage division and so i recently competed at the mrs united states national pageant in orlando florida from july 3rd through july 7th okay. and when i tell you it was such an incredible experience it was one of those you have to be there to to see you know it was one of those type of experiences and so i met some amazing individuals and there were over 250 women who were actually there so with us having those eight different divisions we also outside of the our regular states we also have u.s territorial states as well so i competed against 52 other amazing women so to be to be able to compete on the national stage with so many different women it was amazing it really was that is awesome for those who may not know and may have missed your last interview tell us a little bit about the process leading up to each competition um i know there's a lot of well, I'm sure. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of training and prep, um, physical, mental, um, just preparing. You and know how to answer questions, how to you know work on your poise and things of that nature. So, tell us a little more about the process of getting prepared. Mm-hmm. Did you have a coach? 
helping you through uh, along the way? Absolutely, and that's a great question. So the process was it was a it was a long process, and it's one that I, I feel as if your life experiences always prepare you for the next move or the next challenge that you're going to be faced with. And so after you do the state competition, preparing for nationals or preparing for any competition, you're right. You do have coaches. Now I have a state director. Okay. My state director, she's actually over Mississippi and Arkansas. And so I have, I developed a local team. And so with that, my, uh, one of my local directors was Miss Trina Long and she really worked with me. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I got to meet her. Yes. yes. (laughs) She's phenomenal. And she, she has a lot of expertise and experience in working with the pageant system, especially the Miss America system. And so she's, she was phenomenal in working with me. Also, um, one of my other coaches was Miss Tiffany Johnson. And she also used to be the, one of the coaches who worked with the university of Arkansas at Conway. And so she worked with young ladies there as well but just a team of individual individuals who actually took out the time to help me prep my husband was one of my coaches because oh, wow. we also know that not only do you have to be mentally strong but you also have to be physically strong as okay. well and so we used to have a training regimen that we used to do weekly and I also partnered up with one of my sponsors which is sideline prep so and Janine Samuels, who's also over that. And so she deals with working with young ladies who are preparing for the professional dance world. Mm -hmm. So on top of all of that, she was able to work with me as relates to being able to mentally prepare and also physically prepare as well. I have a lot of amazing sponsors who have taken out the time to not only just support me um, and encourage me along the way, but also who also sponsored me monetary wise and also donating uh gowns and you know my wardrobe so it was it was a lot it was a lot but it's a lot of it was a lot of great greatness does that does that make sense it was greatness (laughs) so in training i will say this there since i've been back i have not been waking up at 4 45 a.m in the morning (laughs) let me just say that but I'm going to be honest. So, but when my opportunity clock used to go off, I don't say alarm clock. I always say my opportunity mm-hmm. clock. Okay. My opportunity clock used to go off Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I used to always get up and head to St. Bernard's Health and Wellness and, you know, go make it, making sure I was able to make it to the, um, you know, hit training class that okay. Coach Key teaches. He was also a, a really good um, mentor and sponsor as well as relates to me preparing uh, physically for, okay. the, um, for the pageant. So there are... Uh, so many individuals who helped or you know who worked with me along the way especially with the uh, interview training as well mrs. Uh, Betty she's out of Memphis Tennessee she also has a company called crowning Queens and she was one of our sponsors who worked with us on you know interviewing and just making sure we were properly prepared for a national so lots and lots and lots and lots and lots more and more and more preparation. It was a lot. So this is not something for the faint of heart. It takes a <laughs> lot of work, dedication. Um, you know, we, we see the pageants on TV, but we only see the after, like, the, the glitz- final. Yeah, the glitz and the glam. Glam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, We don't see the, um, you know, walking on stage in your heels and really practicing. And, you know, did you all have to do a combined number like a performance of some kind yes so we definitely had to do an open opening number what happened is you have a you only you have a short amount of time to learn that opening number and let me just let me go let me go back so just to tell you a little bit about the different categories and our system what's so unique about our system the Mrs. United States National Pageant System is that we have runway which is where we every contestant represents her state with a state costume so it's called the runway competition and so for arkansas with us being known as the natural state the diamond state i wanted to make sure that i was able to embody all of that and so what i did was i utilized our state seal now with our state seal we have the the goddess of liberty we have the bald eagle 
And we also have the angel of mercy. And to, for me, it represents, you know, that freedom and us being able to be there for one another and also just being able to uplift and empower one another as well. And so I was able to have a custom costume designed by Danny Couture, who's actually out of Houston, Texas. He's an up and coming a rising designer. He has done so many different, he styled so many different celebrities wow. and so he's so phenomenal. And so what we did was I was the goddess of liberty and he in my, um, with my costume, if you, if most people are keeping up with Beyonce, <laughs> if you look at her, uh, her, her costume that she had when she performed a couple of weeks ago, I'm not really for sure which, yes. Her, did you see that outfit when she came out and she had the the huge hat, the cape, and it was all sparkling? It was yeah. nice. So at any rate, we Danny and I were able to get together, and he kind of recreated that look to resemble to kind of represent the state of Arkansas. So with my um, with my bodysuit and my cape, we kind of had the diamonds outlined, and it was really spark. It was sparkling. <laughs> it was amazing. Like seriously, it was so amazing. It was Is very the beautiful. Blue kind of yes, it's like okay. blue, bluish gold, but then. The killer part of it, when I say the killer part, the wow part is that once I made it on stage and I stopped and, you know, was able to center center stage, it's kind of like, ah, oh, and you see all of the diamonds. It gives you that diamond illuminate, the that type of effect. So it was amazing, actually. Wow. And for those of you who would like to see more of the highlights from the pageant, go to Mrs. Arkansas United States Pageant. Um, Facebook page and you can uh, click on the pictures and there's some wonderful beautiful pictures um, I just want to give you a round of applause for even <laughs> one you know wanting to compete uh, some people are too shy too reserved and you can't I don't you can't be shy <laughs> that's true because the, the next phase of competition is swimsuit oh now no it was a really big it was a really big deal with some of the other pageant systems doing away with the swimsuit. But our system decided to keep the swimsuit. Now I will say this, for the younger uh, young ladies or the younger divisions, the little miss, the junior, they do not wear swimsuit, they wear active wear. But for the misses and on up, in the Mrs. Division, we actually do swimsuit. And my husband was perfectly fine with me competing in swim the swimsuit okay. portion. As I said, as I mentioned earlier, he was my trainer. And so he worked He worked really hard to help me, you know, develop, you know, this help. We've worked on developing this healthy lifestyle, okay. which goes along with my platform. And that's one of the main reasons why I chose to stay with the pageantry world. I used to do pageants a very long time ago. And so even now, coming back after eight years deciding to you know what I'm gonna compete in the marriage division because this goes as a social worker I have devoted my life and my time to making sure I'm able to help individuals who are in need and just being able to render services for those people and being an active voice for the voiceless so doing pageantry goes along with what I do as a social worker Okay. And again, that healthy lifestyle goes with my platform, Home is Love. And I know we're going to talk a little bit more yes, about my platform a little later on. But yeah, there's swimsuit portion as well. And it it went really, really good, I must say. I was really pleased. Okay. I really was. I was really pleased. You know, I um, you know, saw some of the news stories and read a few articles concerning the removal of the swimsuit division what was some of the controversy that surrounded that decision see and that that's a different it's a completely different system okay and so again with the mrs united states uh pageant system like i said we decided to actually keep the swimsuit portion what i will say is a lot of people um are not familiar with all of the different systems as it relates in the pageant world. So you have so many different pageant systems. And what I always tell people is that for young ladies who want to compete, and even males who want to compete in the pageant world, because there are some pageants who allow males to compete. So what I say is that you always have to do your research to find what pageant system works better for you so that you don't have to change and you can actually be your most authentic self and be you. Because it's only when you're operating in your authentic, being your authentic self that you can really be a blessing or be an asset to other individuals. And so when I looked at, when I did my research, 
the Mrs. United States National Pageant System lines up with my mission as an individual and as a social worker, being able to be a voice to the voiceless, being able to have a platform to go out and advocate for individuals and about being able to be fair. I think it's all about being fair. And so each system has a different brand. Now, to be honest with you, if you've noticed, and well, you said that you're still trying to, you're new to this pageant, yes, pageant world, <laughs> but if you notice, it's all about branding. And so the more okay. you can get individuals to talk about your system and the changes that you're making, that's okay. just a form of branding. And okay. so with the swimsuit change, that's just a, it's just another avenue for them to have individuals talking okay. about the system and branding. I guarantee you next year, it may be something completely different. Wow. Who knows? But I do know this every uh, system always does what's best for that system at okay. that time and each young lady that's representing that system believes in that system and so I completely agree whatever changes those individuals who are on the board whatever changes that they make I feel like they're making them for the betterment of their overall system and you okay. can only only thing you can do is to re you can only respect that okay mm -hmm. now I want to talk about um before we get into homeless love, I want to save that yeah. until the next segment so we'll have, make sure to have enough time to really go into all the details. Um, I want uh, you to please highlight, um, you talked about, you know, having a platform mm -hmm. and being able to represent for other young ladies or other young individuals. Some people look at the pageant, at pageants as being like, again, glitz and glam mm -hmm. and you know, you're on stage and you're waving and smiling and things of that nature, but there's underlying, there's, it's more to it than that. Absolutely. I mean, you have to have a real purpose and stand mm -hmm. for something. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, um, many people that may not know you, you are a professor, Arkansas mm -hmm. State University, mm -hmm. you teach social work. And so you're not just someone, oh, I just thought I want to be in a pageant. <laughs> you know, you have real substance. There's more Absolutely. to you than just being uh, physically pretty and beautiful. And Thank you're you. beautiful on the inside as well. You And you have something to give to the community as a whole, to society as a whole. So can you expound on why it's important to know what you stand for, what platform you stand on, before you even dec anyone decides they want to be in a pageant. <laughs> Absolutely. I learned at a very early age that service is the rent we pay for our house here, okay. I, on, here <laughs> on earth. So I learned it at a very early age. And also, I knew that even if you don't have a lot of money, you can always lend a helping hand. It's um, free to be able to lend a helping hand. It's free to give a smile. And I always tell individuals, why, why are you frowning? Why are you sad? And I know life happens, but then I'm just reminded that as long as we have breath in our bodies, we still have another chance to make a difference and a change. And I know that, that it's easy for me to say that now, right? But it hadn't always been that easy. Okay. And so I know what it's like to be in need. I know what it's like to want somebody to lend a helping hand to help you. And so I've always told God that if you put me in a position where I can, you put me in a position where I can, sh where people can see a light, not just me, but see him in me, because it's only by his grace that I am where I am. And I should mm -hmm. never be ashamed of that, right? Yes, and so it's all about being able to know who you are in him. And it's only when you can you know who you are in him that you really find your true purpose a lot of people we do we see a lot on social media well I'm having a seminar on uh, helping you find your purpose helping you you know figure out what ne what your next goals are but it's only when you get in his manual when I say his manual I'm talking about the Bible the word that you really know which direction you need to travel and so for me what a lot of people don't know is there's more to it in the pageantry world with women just being pretty and like you said the glitz and the glam we have to have a cause because otherwise you will never hold a state title or a local title because judges see right through the in, the young lady who well I just want to do it to be pretty and even if that's the case a lot of women a lot of individuals not just women men too struggle with their self-esteem and their self-confidence and what pageantry does is it's an outlet and a way of empowering individuals to move forward and be their best uh, oftentimes and you mentioned this earlier it takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage to get on stage before someone or in front of people and be judged it really does and so 
one thing that I've noticed, and I did a program several years ago, it was Lady Miss Teen Promise. It's a Teen Promise preparatory uh, program, and it's in Central Arkansas. And okay. I am so grateful to Miss Evangeline for having that program because what happens is you learn the foundation of what pa the pageant, the pageant world is all about. And I'm so thankful for. I, I, my train of thought lost the. Um, <laughs> I lost her name, one of my um, former mentors. And when I tell you the wealth of knowledge that a lot of these women and these men, because there are a lot of men in the pageant world as well, the wealth of knowledge that they share in building you up is priceless. That's amazing. And the more you learn, the more you share. And the more you share, the more you grow. So. Yes, ma'am. We have a few uh, Facebook comments. I yeah. want to say good morning to uh, Brother Bernard Combs. Um, Minister Brian Carter and uh, Sherry Curry says, thanks Dr. Pace Glover for being a great example for the young women, especially our young black women. Mm -hmm. Beauty, beautiful inside. God bless. <laughs> oh, hello. Thank you. I'm, I'm on my Facebook live as well. And I see, uh, I see a few of my, a few of my family members and my friends who have joined in. So I would just like to say hello to a few people. Linda Walker. Robert, um, Marcus, Shanquetta, it's so many of you guys who have tuned in. Hello, and thank you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. Also, my God, Mama, my God, Mama. <laughs> I try to be as real as possible. I'm sorry. It's just the only way I know how. I'm a we really appreciate everyone for tuning in and checking in and um, listening and absorbing the information you have to share. Um, this is my first time meeting you and I'm just in total awe right now. You're so now. sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> and you're such a beautiful person too. And you have a beautiful smile too. Well, thank you. I love meeting women, especially, I mean, sorry I'm biased. Um, I love meeting women that have a purpose and yeah. that try to leave a positive mark in this world, in this society. Um, so I'm very grateful and I'm very humbled to thank have you. met you. It's all about building that legacy. It truly is all about building that legacy. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about your platform, Home is Love, and maybe get into some more details about the pageant world. Just talk about some of the fun stuff that you got Yay. to experience as well. So you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Do you ever feel frustrated when life goes from good to bad? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. We're faced with a lot of blitzes in life, but here are three strategies for turning your trials into triumphs. First, take a long-term view of your life and situation that you're facing, such as illness, losing a loved one, a job loss. Second, be willing to change and become more humble, maybe more of a teammate and less of a solo artist. Third, take your eyes off yourself and focus on others. How can you bless and encourage them? Take this opportunity to take the bad and use it for good. To learn more about how to turn your trials into triumphs, check out my podcast with author and former NFL quarterback Jeff Kemp at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Want to learn more about today's topic? Download my podcast at markmerrill.com. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook gears underscore inc on instagram and the gears foundation at gmail.com meineke of jonesboro is now starks auto service a full service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair brake service tires oil changes and more performed by ase certified mechanics starks auto service 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. Hello, 
I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was established on June 28, 1997 by 13 dynamic women who accepted the challenge and honor of chartering the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter. Today, the chapter continues to impact the Jonesboro community by sponsoring programs such as the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast, Back to School Bash, Disaster Preparedness, Delta Academy, Empower African Girls, and Autism Awareness. Our focus correlates with the national theme, Uncompromising Commitment commitment to communities, service, leadership, empowerment. Our chapter supports Delta's five-point programmatic thrust, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. More information about the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or via email jonesboroalumni at live.com. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com, and at 870-530-5841. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest is Dr. Tamara Pace Glover, Mrs. Arkansas, United States. Um, and so we were gonna we're gonna get right back into our conversation talking about um, what she plans to do, you know, for the rest of her reign and talk about her platform, Home is Love. I wanna say good morning though to Dr. Sharice Jones Branch. For checking in. Good morning, Dr. Hello, Branch. Hello, Dr. Branch. <laughs> One of my sponsors. She's I love her to pieces. She's probably in the office. She always says she's supposed to be writing, but she's doing other things. But thank you for checking in, though. <laughs> she is so phenomenal. She's, she's one of my first sponsors, actually. She's, That's awesome. Oh, I, I love her to pieces. <laughs> All right, so let's get into talking about Home is Love. And how did you come up with that title and what, that, what does that entail? Okay, so... As a social worker, I mentioned being able to just go back and give to the community. One of, I knew at an early age that I wanted to help individuals and that's, that's just bottom line, okay. right? But in the field, you see so much. And my field is challenging, but it's so rewarding to see or start begin working with a family or an individual who who feels as if they've hit rock bottom okay. and then because of the services that you're able to render then you see them move up and you see their life change wow. to me that's priceless the other thing is that i was affected you know a lot of times you read about certain situations and you're rendering service to people and they're not related to you but when things when situations hit close to home it's really life changing mm -hmm. and so for me in 2012, I had a life-changing experience. It was a very traumatic experience that happened. My brother passed away, and my brother, his name was A-Ray, A-Ray McAllister. Okay. And he was my younger brother, I'm the oldest. And so, at any, you know, 
when I found when he passed away at the age of 20 due to self-inflicted um, they said that he died by suicide it was very it was realistic to me it was at that moment when I realized that you know we don't have time to play we and that's why again I say it's priceless to smile and be nice to the person that's next to you because truly you do not know what the person is going through and there are so many people in our community in our families who are suffering in silence and so home is love I developed I use it as an acronym I was listening to pastor Michael McClure and I listen to him often he's a pastor out of Alabama okay. and as he was doing one of his sermons he was just he was talking about home and I thought about it and I said you know what that's home is not just a physical home we hear home is where the heart is but home is when we're able to render those services to someone else to make them feel loved to make them feel valued and appreciated and that's the mindset that I've always had and especially after I experienced what I experienced with my brother and so H stands for the heart healthy lifestyle that not only um, I live but me and my husband live together and that we want other families to live I truly believe in my heart that when you are healthy mentally emotionally physically spiritually and let's just be honest financially yes. then you are at the peak and you are truly living your best life wow. and you being healthy in those areas it's not about you comparing yourself to someone else because we talked about being physically fit and me working out and just trying to eat better and you know focusing on positive things and you know working on being more uh, mentally sound and mentally strong I'm living my best life but that may okay. be different for someone else and so being able to encourage other families live their best life that's what the H stands for the O stands for outreach both my husband and I get out in the community or we're out in the community helping families. Not only is he a li licensed professional counselor, our fears are, are closely related. And with me being a social worker and also an educator, our goal is to get out and do outreach. And we found that it's more effective when you have the entire family involved and everyone is very supportive of one another. And what I've, what I've learned and what I've come to understand and research shows this is that when you have one member in a family struggling or challenged who's been exposed to psychological toxic environments, you can't just work with that individual. You see greater results when that individual, when the entire family is wow. working together as a collective team because it's all about the family dynamic. Wow. So going in the community and helping to really change those lives. M is for motivation because let's just be real. We've all made decisions in our life where we're not proud of those decisions. But what I found is that some people cannot move past some of their past decisions and their past holds them hostage. And so me and my husband, we like to motivate individuals to move forward past those current decisions because no situation is hopeless. It's just that sometimes people lose hope. But if we can embrace love and start showcasing that love, okay. then we give that hope back to those individuals and, and letting them know that, you know what? It's not about December 31st, uh, 1159 p.m. It's not. Your new year can start every single day. Wow. So what you don't like that you did, any choice that you made on the day before, you don't have to do it no more. And the choices that you made on yesterday that you like and you enjoy, then you keep on doing that because okay. I guarantee you, every choice that we make, it has a consequence, whether it's positive <laughs> or negative, it has a consequence. Oh, yes. And the E is for education. Education is, the education is very powerful, but at the same time, it's only when you can apply what you've learned that you have true wisdom and so being able to educate individuals and empower them to stay at a constant state of evolution being able to evolve because I'm gonna be honest with you I don't want to be like Tamara yesterday okay. I want to be better than I was on the day before but I believe that I should learn something from every choice that I make and try to make sure I'm bettering myself every single day so when people say oh you're you're trying to or you think you're better than somebody else no I don't think I'm better than anybody but I do have the mindset here that I am the best and I deserve the best in every area of my life and I want everyone who comes in who who I come in contact with to embrace that same mindset because think about it 
if you know you're the best, that means you're going to start making better choices. Yes. That means you're going to hang around <laughs> better individuals. And even if individuals you're hanging around with are not making be the best choices at that time, you encourage them to make better choices, right? Okay, yes. So. Wow. Okay. We have a few Facebook comments. Um, okay. Lynn Doughty uh, says, hello. Um, and Dr. Sharice Jones Branch is saying, amen. Um, good morning to Brandon Tabor and Miss Tanita Boy Wathel. She says, amen. Good morning, amen. ladies. Good morning to you, Good Tanita. morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, this is such wonderful information. Now, do you have um, these, what can I say, these different topics, titles, um, the outline of home? Do you have this like on a website somewhere or something where people can actually go and kind of dig deeper and, you know, have some. Do some self-study and have some self-revelation. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the works. And truth be told, I'll throw this out there. I, I just believe you should just speak life. It's actually going to be, we're working on uh, starting a nonprofit. My husband and I are working on a nonprofit. And so that it'll be to honor both my brother and his sister. Okay. Um, again, there are a lot of things in the works. And even before I became the reigning Mrs. Arkansas United States, I had been traveling and speaking to different um, different schools, different mm -hmm. conferences, just encouraging and empowering individuals. And I challenge everybody to do the same thing. The good thing is that I don't really see it as a platform. It's my passion. Okay. It truly is my passion. But the key, the key foundation, um, home, love is the key foundation in home. And it's the key element to helping families truly achieve their family dreams and individual dreams, making those dreams become a reality. And so anybody can implement my pa my pa okay. my passion and my platform and so we have it on our facebook page okay but one of my sponsors, she just posed a question to me about a week or two ago, and she wanted to. She said, you know what? I want to make sure that I can set you up with a an actual website. Okay. So whether it's connected as Mrs. Arkansas United States or just in general for people to kind of keep up. Because here's the thing. This, the service don't just stop. It's not just for a year. I've okay. been doing this for a very long time, which is why it was easy for me to transition into the role as the reigning Mrs. Arkansas uh -huh. United States, because I didn't just start doing this like yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. This is how, this is my lifestyle. And uh -huh. I, I find, I find that it's the best joy that a person can ever have when you're rendering service to someone else. When we take the focus off mm -hmm. of self and we we focus on someone else that's when we really start to truly feel fulfilled yes mm -hmm. um i have a love for community i say community service but helping others um i worked at another nonprofit before i came to the radio station but this was back in 2003 2007 between that time frame and at the time i didn't realize how important and relevant nonprofits mm -hmm. um, or service organizations were it wasn't until going through life experiencing more things here i am again having the opportunity to get back out into the community and i want to encourage everyone that works in a service environment to really think about your why you start yes. your organization what purpose do you want to serve? Like, really look at your mission and your goals and make sure that is at the forefront of all that you do at all times versus my name, I'm doing this mm -hmm. one-time event versus how am I empowering the people that I come in contact with? Um, I had this conversation with a lady, you know, yesterday about I'm going to, I got a book that I'm going to start reading called Toxic Charity. I've heard mm -hmm. some great things about this book. And it, um, the people who recommended gave me a synopsis of basically different organizations need to reframe, I don't want to say change, reframe <laughs> the way they give and how they give and what they give mm -hmm. to the individuals that they serve versus giving someone a handout, mm -hmm. give them something else that will sustain them past that one moment. Oh, you <laughs> preach, you preach. I always tell individuals, I love temporary blessings, but I love lifetime blessings. And those yes. are the ones that you can store in your toolbox that no one can ever take away from you, which is part of the reason why we focus heavily on education because the more you know and the, yes. <laughs> mo the more you can apply practical principles to your life because it's easy for me to tell someone stay positive stay positive when I haven't walked in their shoes yes. but it's a different story when you can share tech real life techniques 
techniques with them so that they can actually apply to their life to help them to overcome certain situations. And I agree with you 110% as it relates to organizations being able to make sure that we're putting out substance and we're truly making an impact. The other thing is that I found is that an individual can effect change, but constant change and true change happens when we work together collectively. Yes. Being able to partner up with different organizations, which is why a lot of times you see national uh, pageant systems, they've partnered up with different foundations. And so being able to partner up with different foundations and organizations to help their vision come to life. As long as it lines up with your vision, then you won't have a problem. See, a lot of times we don't want to help someone else because we don't want... Sometimes it's challenging for us to see other people do better. And I know you probably wouldn't have your normal queen say that on the radio, but I just did. Because it's simply the truth. Sorry. And I unfortunately have seen <laughs> that. Um, I can say I've been active in the community within the past three years. So within the past three years, yes, I have seen that very thing. Someone, because they want their name to be on top, yeah. they don't want to work with someone else to serve the whole of the community. Like, okay, we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> but let me, let me just say this too. A lot of, we, I just found that we're more, more effective when we work together. Yes, ma'am. Most definitely. I would love to And see. only what we do for Christ is going to last. That's just, and so for his name's sake. So yes, I have on this crown and I have on this beautiful sash and I'm excited about that. But I tell you, I still go to work. I still get my hands, I still get my hands and my knees dirty because I don't mind. Like it's all about being able to help someone else. And so when this, again, in 2019, when I crown my successor, that doesn't mean everything stops for me. No, you that means going. I need to go to work even harder harder even you know i need to do yes. more and so that's what it's truly all about amen and you have something that you can also um, pass on to your students um through each class each round of students um what age range or what level do you mainly teach um what i guess you know freshman through senior like what level okay. so i teach all bachelor level social work okay. students and some of the courses that i teach are electives and so you may have anywhere for any uh, classification from a freshman okay. all the way to a graduating senior, okay. but primarily I'm a bachelor level uh, social work student, right, and well. some master level students who are in a, who don't have a BSW in social work, okay. so foundational uh, students. I I'm so so excited. Again, when you off the air, you mentioned. Uh, you say you're from Pine Bluff and you went to school in Pine Bluff <laughs> and and what I what I shared is that I'm so thankful that I was able to re receive such a strong educational foundation at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff because those those the professors that were there they truly believed in the students they believed in education with a personal touch it's completely different at other universities but it was amazing and it's because of the strong foundation that I was able that I was able to be you know I was accepted into the master's program here <coughs> and some of my professors who they're no longer here but Dr. Jacinto uh, Dr. Gari they just truly believed in me and so it's been amazing it's truly amazing I was actually part of the first graduating class in 2011 to receive a master's in social work from Arkansas State University. So wow. it was truly amazing. It really was. That's awesome. I want to say also good morning to um, Mr. Chu. He says, teach a man to fish. So I'm guessing we know the rest of that, you know, they eat for a day, but. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, you teach them to fish and they eat for the rest of their life. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I want to say good morning to uh, Christy Mathis Conway and Miss Maddie Warren. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Please share this video so that everyone else can be blessed by the knowledge that Dr. Uh, Tamara is sharing with us on today. Um, I want to talk about now, we've talked about, you know, the hard work it took to get to the page. And <laughs> so within these, uh, you know, last three minutes, I want to talk about some of the fun stuff that you got to do, the people that you got to meet. <laughs> so I met some amazing people and I'll tell you, you always meet a anywhere I, there's no place in these United States 
that I've ever been in my life that I have not met an amazing soror. So I want to do a special shout out <laughs> to one of my sorority sisters who is also uh, Mrs. Uh, Southeast Region, and she actually placed in the top the top 16. Okay. So she is phenomenal. She's doing excellent things. Her name is Lashan Dixon. I'm going to yes give her a shout out. <laughs> I met some other amazing women from all over uh, these United States. Mrs. Idaho. I mean, I mean so many. She wow. so phenomenal. Uh, actually, the young lady who was crowned Miss uh, Mrs. Samantha. She's actually she was Mrs. She's Mrs. Midwest. It was so many of them, and so you it, it was hard to really develop. Um, you know have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time okay. because it was all about going to work so when you come to a national pageant yes you have you have fun but it's all about going to work okay. and so my sister queens uh and with mississippi um mrs um mississippi uh whitney and also Mrs. Hospitality, Marisha, and Mrs. Uh, Mid-South, uh, uh -huh. Michelle, they are all beautiful women. And let me just do this. Shouts out to uh, Mrs. Teen Mississippi, Kimber, she actually was crowned uh -huh. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Teen United States. And so that was my <laughs> sister queen and also my secret sister. One of the things that my director did this year is that she wanted each of us to have a sister queen, a secret sister. And so before, and I didn't mention this earlier, one of the things that we did in preparation was we had a Queens boot camp. And so I had to travel to Nat, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And so we all stayed in this home and it was amazing. But my sister queen actually won, was crowned Mrs. Teen Mississippi, I mean Mrs. Teen United States. And she's a phenomenal young lady. So many of them, Morgan. Uh, Emily, I have so many different uh, amazing sister queens in Mississippi, and so I just want to say thank you because some of the experiences that we've, some of the experiences that I've had, I'll, I always cherish. That's I really awesome. will. But let me tell you, the best thing about it is that my husband was able to share this experience with uh -huh. me, and he is truly God's gift to me. I, when I count my blessings, I count him twice because. Uh -huh. I know there are a lot of individuals, a lot of women who want someone. And so sometimes we often rush in relationships just to say we have someone. But I'll tell you, I would have waited a thousand years for him. He is truly, he is the epitome of what a real man and a God-fearing husband looks, wow. feels, smells like. He is the, all of the above. I love him. I'm going I'm to take one of Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, one, of his th one of his sayings. He says, I, I, I love my husband with every ounce, with every being, with my heart, my whole soul. I love him with everything I got. He is truly my earthly king. And wow. so that to me was the icing on the cake for me this time because this was not my first time competing in a national pageant. Yes, this was my first time competing in the marriage division, okay. but having him with me, it was gold. It was, it was awesome. gold. It was gold. All right, so, and Mr. Chu says, Leo the man. The man. Leo Glover, that's his name. Okay. Leonardo <laughs> Glover, he is the man. All right, well, we're going to take another quick break. I want to thank you all for listening, but don't go anywhere. We have a wrap-up session, but we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. The Federal Trade Commission continues to warn consumers to watch out for fake debt scams. Here are some tips from the FTC to protect yourself from this type of scam. If someone calls to collect a debt you don't recognize... Request to call his name, company, street address, and telephone number. In some cases, asking for this information will be enough to cause a scammer to hang up. Refuse to discuss the debt until you receive a validation notice, which includes the amount owed, the name of the creditor you owe, and your rights under the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. If an address is provided, send a letter requesting the caller to cease contact. Do not provide the caller with personal, financial, or other sensitive information. And do not be intimidated into giving it up. Hang up and contact your creditor directly about the suspicious calls and find out who or if the creditor has authorized someone to collect the debt. 
I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. KLEK is conducting a listener survey that will allow for you to give feedback on the station. The information from responses to the survey will allow us to make KLEK a better radio station for you. The survey is on our website, www.klekfm.org. Or if you need a paper copy, you can call the station on our business line, 870-203-9915. We ask that as many listeners as possible fill out the survey so that we may have the best possible feedback to continue to educate, entertain, and empower you and be your radio station. As a token of our appreciation, one lucky person who completes the survey will win $102.50. You must submit your email on the survey in order to qualify to win. The winner will be drawn August 1st. Also, each week in July, a winner will be drawn to win his or her choice of a KLEK coffee mug or hat. Again, the KLEK Listener Survey is on our website, www.klekfm.org. KLEK thanks everyone for their support. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. The Black Professionals Network of Jonesboro was incorporated January 2013 with the mission of creating networking opportunities and to create community presence in the Jonesboro area. BPN is a diverse group of professionals established to make Jonesboro an ideal place for people of color and operates under the four pillars of live, learn, lead, and link. BPN meets the third Thursday of every month. More info, Black Professionals Network on Facebook and bpnjonesboro.org. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. 
House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. KLEK 102.5 FM is giving you more praise. That's right, KLEK brings to you all Gospel Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, enjoy all of your favorite gospel hits and get your praise on all day long. Plus, the return of the KLEK praise break. Lift up your hands, rejoice, and praise Him all day, all Wednesday, every Wednesday, on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now, back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest today has been Dr. Tamara Pace Glover, um, Mrs. Arkansas, United States. And it's been such a joy um, having her here talking all about the pageant world, her road to the national level, and just everything in between and uh, everything that she stands for. Um, we're not going to say her platform, who she is, what she embodies. Um, and so I just pray that everyone that comes in contact you is truly blessed and uh, um I don't know. I hope they feel what I feel (laughs) when they come in contact with you um, and you share your message, you know, of love and hope and joy with them. Um, You talked earlier about, you know, about smiling and how, Mm -hmm. you know, why are you frowning? Because you've been blessed with another day to do something different than the day before or better than the day before. Um, I always say that. Um, it doesn't cost anything to smile. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. That's true. Um, and I always tell people, I hope you're making plans to make the day great. So yes, I love that. I feel like the more I say that, the more that I can embody that as mm-hmm. well and allow that to be my guiding force. Um, hopefully it inspires someone else. <laughs> I agree. And to go along with that, it only takes 13 muscles to smile. Okay. It takes more muscles to frown. 64 Ooh. muscles to frown. So I'd rather use less muscles. Okay. So 13 to smile. But I am so grateful. And so I feel so honored that you all selected me to be on the show this morning. I'm so thankful. I cannot thank you and Leganzi enough for having me. And just the Jones, the Northeast Arkansas community, the Southeast Arkansas community, and the state of Arkansas in general because I felt so much love and support over the years and especially now so I'm so grateful and so thankful to you all and my sponsors so thank you so much well we have um, a little less than two and a half minutes so I'm going to let you have the floor and just give any final encouraging words that you would like to give I would just like to say to the listeners that no matter what you're you're facing or experiencing on today, again, like you mentioned earlier, let today be the best day of your life. What you don't like that happened on yesterday, let it go and just try your best to move forward. I can also be reached on Facebook, Mrs. Arkansas United Arkansas United States 2018 or just Tamara Glover. I'm also on Instagram, Mrs. Arkansas US 2018. Please send me a message on Facebook, uh, inbox me or just in general reach out to me. I am available. I'm not one of those queens where you cannot reach out and touch me. I am available. I'm excited that on this Thursday this Thursday I'll be traveling to Pine Bluff, Arkansas to host a pageant on Friday for the assistant living home and so I'm really looking forward to really just continuing (laughs) all of my work. So it doesn't stop here. I had an excellent time at Nationals and I'm just looking forward to seeing how God can utilize me as his vessel on a larger platform and so I'm just really excited about what's in store and meeting so many different new people along this beautiful journey so thank you so much to all of my supporters followers and just every individual even if you pray for me or it's just said hi or smile back at me trust and know that I appreciate it I truly do so thank you so much and also thank you to all of my followers on this live uh, video today I appreciate you guys as well 
And there are so many things that are coming that we can't talk about right now, but I'll be on the lookout for more yes. from Dr. Tamara uh, Pace Glover concerning other projects. And I'm just excited to see what the rest of the year holds for your reign. And then, you know, even after you crown someone else, yes. what else you have in store for the community? Yes, <laughs> my husband and I are working on some stuff, so I'm excited. All right. <laughs> well, we thank you all for tuning in to Community Conversations. Don't forget, check in Monday through Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. We will see you back tomorrow. I hope everyone has a great day. And Chelsea Chapman says, yes, Dr. Glover, yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a very blessed day. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the